And let me kind of throw this stuff out of my way. This thing always gets in the way. I guess we can put it up there. Okay, so and if Judy can get here, I know she said she's got some things going on now, but um, okay, we're going to start off with a cutwork image, right? And you guys mm-hmm. should already have these images. Yeah, I did one before. Mm-hmm. But um, I can cheat and give you that back again for homework, can't I? <laughs> no, I think I have a different I one this time. going to go a little bit more advanced on us. Well, and I have different images because I know Meg now. <laughs> She's using that. Well, my okay, pussycat images. one was done in, M- in, in Expressive. That's the thing. It, it was mostly done in Ember. I started off in Expressive. The eyes and the mo- mouth and the nose were done with Expressive. But mm-hmm. I couldn't I couldn't figure out how to get it to bend without having to do all manual stitches. So, you know, yeah. all, all run stitches. Okay, so uh, here's our image, right? And you know I'm going to go like, well, I guess not uh, quite like okay. that. Maybe this way. Oh, and then big one. take it down. No, no, not this one. Maybe we did, huh? I don't think we did. Uh, no, I don't think so. This looks similar, but it's not the same. Yeah, I don't it's, think it's quite it's thing. quite big and open. It's 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 more open, I think. It looks yeah, I like that. Yeah, I'm gonna resize it quite a bit. What size is it? It's only small, is it? So I just hate this this new build because you can't ever see anything when you're in that image select thing. My mouse just disappears, you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just drives you crazy. Okay, let's go back. Okay, so we'll make it about that size. All right, so, um, you know, here's our, our cut work. And this is actually from an old vintage cut work magazine. And what the patterns in there are telling you is here's, you know, like the little Richelieu uh, mm-hmm. lines, right? And mm-hmm. you don't necessarily leave those in fabric. You can if you want. You know, there's a little more maybe security. But if you really look, you know, if you really look at these, it, it, they're they're very small, you know. Mm. They're that's just going to be like shards of fabric, basically, right? Mm. But you can leave them there if you want. Um, what I do with cut work is, you know, I kind of treat it like an applique. I'm going to do the outline around here, and I'm going to um, put a second run in here for support because you're going to take an exacto knife here, mm. and you're going to cut out these sections with an exacto knife, right? Yeah. And so you want to make sure that you have that little buffer line in case you cut, you know. Um, And you're going to have, of course, you know, tear away or a wash away backing behind this. And you want to be careful not to cut the backing. Well, it doesn't always quite work that way. So it's always a good idea to either, you know, put a wash away layer or two on top after you cut this away or you know, plan on putting a a bottom with a little bit of sticky spray underneath. I I prefer the let's put it on top kind of method personally, Um, just because I'm not big on sticking anything underneath, right? I just, I I like backing hooped. I don't like floating backing. But that's, you know, my personal thing. Now, if you look from this pattern, there's this little dashed line, right? And what the dashed line is telling you is that, you know, this is symmetrical, you know, that's, you know, I can only do half of this and flip it if I want to, because these are going to be the same. They're intended to be mm-hmm. the same. Okay. <laughs> so, you know, when we're looking at this, these white or gray sections are supposed to be the solid sections. These are supposed to be little, um, you know, just little satin stitch or French, big French knots for Nancy, because Nancy loves French knots, right? But mm-hmm. yeah, so really do I. Supposed to be little satin circles is what they're supposed to be. Okay. So when you're looking at this, now you can do something with this. You can decorate on top here if you want. And, you know, if you want to do a very vintage type of of cut work, the vintage cut work was done with a buttonhole stitch. And what a buttonhole stitch is, it's really like a blanket stitch, only it's smaller and it's tighter. Okay. So a buttonhole stitch I'll make it kind of big right here, and then, you know, I can kind of shrink it. This is 
a buttonhole stitch. Let me kind of make these things and then shrink them up so you can see. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, here's the buttonhole stitch, right? There it is. But it is real tight, tighter than that even. And let me yeah. shrink this. Yeah. You know what? I've been working in this other program that lets me scroll and enlarge things. And I've gotten spoiled. Let me do it this way. Yeah. Okay. It's so, hard, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. When you, you know. Okay, so you figure, you know, you've got a buttonhole stitch, and of course it's a blanket stitch, so it would be more even on top, and it's small, and it's tight, okay? So, you know, you're talking about, wow, hold on, there we go. You're talking about something that's very, very close, and if I go one-to-one, -one, see how close that is? A button, yeah. a blanket, a buttonhole stitch mm -hmm. is even closer than this, okay? Yeah. It's just really almost a continuous that blanket stitch. stitch. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's it's not a satin. Yeah, it's, but um, it's got the blanket, but it's like a satin stitch. It's so close. It's yeah, it's pretty close, you know. And and you use a heavier thread on it, is you know, so that you're not making eight million stitches, right? You know, mm -hmm. we're not going to do this by hand. So, you know, you'd have to think: Do you want it to be a satin stitch, or do you want it to be a blanket stitch? And if you wanted to be a blanket stitch outline, you'd have to really think about how you wanted to do that. And we'll take a look at some OTs to see what we can do with that on that as well. Now, mm -hmm. these black sections, you know, are going to be cut out. Mm -hmm. Except you've got these little Richelieu things here, right? Yep. So <laughs> this half is the same as this, and this is the central location. Yeah. So the best way to do this is to think logically where you're going to start and where you're going to end. You know, you want to... Um, the best way to handle a large design like this is to go as much as possible from the center out. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Just looking at that. And that's going to, you know, even out your, you know, the, the um, you know, fabric as you go, right? So you're going to go from the center here and you're going to be spreading out. Okay. But mm. you have to think about in terms of how to get back to over here, which we need to do to be able to connect over to here, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, when you're thinking in those terms, think logically, do you want to start up here? Do you want to start here? And if you start here, how are you going to get over to there? And one of the advantages you have is you can use these little sections you're going to cut away as, you know, to put your runs in for right now. That's fine. Um, because eventually you're going to have to deal with these Richelieu bars. So mm -hmm. we're going to start, I'm going to start basically from here and you know I'm going to kind of you know run this and I might have to run back a little bit and that's okay if I have to run back on something a little bit that's fine um, one of the things you have to remember is when you're dealing with run lines here right mm -hmm. okay there's my run line right mm -hmm. in and out point I'm going to make a second run line just so you can see kind of what happens Okay, there's my jump. I start and I end, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, maybe the best way to do this is, okay, this is my first line. I'll turn it green. Okay, because remember, paste on top, and this is the blue mm -hmm. one. Okay, in points over here, out points over there. In order for there to be a jump on screen that you can see, that's supposed to be the same color. So now I've got my end point jumping over to here. Okay, so something to think about on these lines is with this program, if I move my out point or my in point, see, no matter where mm -hmm. I put it in here, I can control where things begin or where they, you know, end on this line. Not all programs let me do this with running lines. No, they don't. Yeah. And what happens is I'm going to, you know, I would, you know, I would end here. So I would go all the way over to here and back. I would backtrack, okay? Mm -hmm. And if I start here, I'll start here and I'll go here and backtrack and over, okay? So I'm going to have some backtrack if I do this, right? But but it does let me do that, which is important to know when you're working with something like these scrolls, right? Rather than mm -hmm. you having to manually backtrack and hope that you're on, on you know, hitting your points correctly, all you have to do is move your in and out points and the program is going to do it for you. So let me zoom in a little bit, and we will start on this section. 
<laughs> so we're going to start with a running stitch because, you know, we decided that we were going to treat this like an applique or I decided and you're just kind of going with the flow, right? Mm-hmm. Because I need to get these sections cut. Now, see where this little gap is right here? Mm-hmm. I'm not going to leave that as a gap. This is a hand mm-hmm. stitch pattern. And that gap, if you were doing this by hand, you would know there's no way I'm detaching these pieces. I'm not mm-hmm. going to do it. They have to stay connected. So, yeah. you know, just bear that in mind. Even this piece here has to be connected. I can't have these pieces disconnected and flopping all over the place. Mm-hmm. That's when you do why, the outline, though, it would join them up, wouldn't it? The satin right. stitch, because we're doing it by machine. But I don't want to cut the material here. Yeah. I don't want to do it. Okay, you just have to bear that in mind and think in terms of this. The reason these Richelieu bars are here is because if they weren't here for support, I would have these curling forward mm. at some point. Mm. You know how you wash lace and it curls forward and you have to press it? Mm-hmm. And, you know, yeah. I would have the same problem with this. That is why the designer put these Richelieu bars in. And mm. their divisions here are, and, and the same thing with this line here, are to tell me where to stitch. Okay, nothing more. They don't expect you to cut that. So if I'm starting mm. over here, I'm going to follow the line, right? I'm just going to you know, follow the line and stay on the curves. And, you know, this is my cutting line. And to be honest, I don't care if when I happen to use the X-Acto knife, if I trim this line a little bit, I'm not going to get real stressed out if it gets cut because I'm going to put a little support line inside of this. Now, you know, I would just kind of curl around here and keep following this (coughs) and, you know, straddle these sections right here. You know, straddle them. You know not to cut but, you know, straddle these sections, right? And this is going to give mm-hmm. you some support. Now, I could just go around here and ignore the sections that are going to be cut, but I do, you know, kind of want some support, right? Plus, I can use this line to do something else with, okay? So mm-hmm. when I come to here, you know, I am going to left-click, right? This is my one line. And then I'll start the curving process here. And you know, I'll finish up this section. Um, Let me backspace a little bit. I'll go ahead and go this way, right? And if you lose track of where you are, you know, you can hit enter because you can always pick back up and just start a new line. But, Mm -hmm. you know, here is, you know, I'm going to make these curves and, you know, I don't want to necessarily get all the way back to here just quite yet. Maybe I want to go, you know, around that a little more. So you can go. Oh, and, uh, yeah, I might have gone to the left up there, up the top there. Yeah, I mean, you can go around and you can do this because even if we backtrack, it's not going to be that big of a deal, right? But I don't have to necessarily trace up to here, this edge where I'm at now. And the reason is, is because, you know, I'm not going to cut that. And see where I am right here? Mm. I'm not going to cut that right now. I just want to concentrate where I'm going to cut. Well, I guess you would kind of cut that if you were doing like a slap it in there kind of thing, right? Mm. But hold on. Let me backtrack. You know, so, and this is going to be the same thing. Like I didn't logic this one out. I've done it a couple of different times, but it's been a while since I've used this image. This is where you're going to want to, you know, treat this like, you know, the remember those puzzles on the back of the cereal boxes with the maze? Mm-hmm. This is where you're going to want to treat that like, you know, before you start digitizing, where you're going to want to look at it and think, how am I supposed to do this, right? Yeah. Okay. So, you know, and here, you know, here I am. I'm right here um, back to where I started. If I have to overlap this, no biggie, right? It's just the Mm. line. I'm going to cover it up or probably end up trimming it anyway. Mm. Oh, cleverly done. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't, at this point, if I'm going to backtrack, it's no big deal, right? Yeah. It's just a line. But, you know, just so you know, make sure, you know, that you don't 
cut just because there's a line here. You want to be careful with this. Mm. And if I have to, like here you can see I'm taking that point all the way over, right? Yeah. If I need to, I'll use one of those little Richelieu bars as an escape route, you mm -hmm. know, or I can just run through the black section. But, you know, I want to try not to do that so I know that I'm supposed to cut, actually. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, you know, here, you know, we're going to overlap again. Not a big deal, right? Mm. Nobody cares that there's that little overlap. It's going to be covered up. And, you know, so well, it would help if I could kind of hit on the target, though, huh? If it wasn't black, it'd be easier to see. Um, true, because the line's black. But, you know, I can see the points when I'm entering. And you can see over here, see that point right there? Uh-huh. I'm going to just go ahead and, and connect those points because it's a line. I can get away with doing that. And when I come up to here, you know, I can go backtrack over here. I don't really need to put a line here. So, you know, now I can go ahead and go around the outside. And if you want to treat this truly like an applique, um, you know, because Basically, you're going to have to trim your fabric here, right? Mm -hmm. So if you're not inserting this, if you're not inserting this into something, if you're making this as like a little freestand section, right? Yeah. Then you, you could treat this truly yeah. right, like an applique. In most mm -hmm. cases, you know what? You know, this was intended to either be on an edge where you would hand cut it, um, you know, and you're just going to cut these pieces out of the edge of a fabric. You know, so you mm -hmm. could do that, too. Put it on the edge of a skirt or the edge of a, a tablecloth or, you know, you have all kinds of options. But, you know, you could treat it truly like an applique. Have this stitch out on your stabilizer, slap your fabric down, and put the second line down to cut. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, you know, here we are. We're going to come around this section, which we haven't done yet. Oops, I wanted to right-click there. And, you know, you can see, you guys can do, it's just tracing it. And if you end up with them, some extra lines, oh, big deal. Nobody's going to see them, right? Mm -hmm. mm. And there's a couple of lines, like there's one section that we missed because mm. it's inside. See that little teardrop section? Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. missed that because it's inside. So at some point, we're going to have to have a jump. And remember, this is one big line at this point. I have not stopped and hit enter yet. But even mm -hmm. if I did and I had a jump, oh, who cares, right? No biggie. Mm -hmm. Okay, you know, and actually I'm going to backtrack here and just, oh, I guess I don't have to because remember these, this is symmetrical, so I'm just going to go ahead and go around here. And we'll stop at that halfway point. Okay, I didn't get the top yet. And... You know, I, I could, I could just go straight up here. I've got a couple of holes in here to cut to, um, but I'm going to go ahead and hit enter so you can see my line. See my line? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. I don't have anything here yet, right? Mm -hmm. And I haven't mm -hmm. gotten this or this piece, and I haven't gotten the top sections yet. So, mm -hmm. you know, from here, you have to kind of make up your mind, you know, where's your in, where's your out point, because right now, this is one big giant line. Mm. I'd probably um, start with the top little bit and the flower and then come down and do all that bit that you just did. Yeah. I mean, you have to kind of logic it out and think about it. But, yeah. you know, at this point, I'm looking at it like a line. I don't really care if I had a lot of jumps. So this is what I've got. I've got two lines. I'm going to open up my sequence view, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, here's that first thing. Like, at this, you start here, you know, I would start with this. There's my in and out point. You know, I'm not going to redo all of this line just because I might have a jump. But mm -hmm. what I can do is say, you know what, here's my in point and just have a little jump right there. Yeah. And here's my out point. 
right? Mm-hmm. And then I could um, begin doing the Let section the here. Don't worry about it. <laughs> right, right. You know, because at this point, I, it doesn't make really any difference, you know? Yeah. Um, so, you know, I can do something like that and then just pick it back up and, you know, yeah. start from here. And uh, let me think, yeah, there's my out point. And, or I can move it down in here even and start. Or, you know, I could do a lot of different things. But, you know, if you're worried about jump stitches, you're going to cut these things anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, where you want to really worry is going to be when you get into, you know, your your cover, basically, on this. And it, there's no way to really take this and treat it like your cover stitch. So you're going to punch this. You know, a couple of times, actually. Mm. But when you get up to something like this, you're going to want to go over it. You're going to want to connect them so you know, do not cut. Wow, I'm batting a thousand here. (laughs) It's been a long week. (laughs) And, you know, that's, we've got a point there, right? So we'll just take this back. No biggie. Um, You know, we can trace around there. And, you know, the same thing here. So you have that little extra line there. Big deal. It's a running stitch. You know, who cares, right? Mm-hmm. And the same thing here. If you come back up here and, okay, there I end. And, you know, I'm going to go ahead and move my out point down to here. And that lets me get the last of that, right? Except for mm. the arches in here. But... You know, it's kind of nice being able to move that out point and the in point because I can kind of at least cut down on the jump stitches, right? Uh Mm. And I think this is the last little section that I actually have to get done. And I'm going to move that out point over to here. Okay, so what I've got is I've got all of that outlined now, right? Let me zoom out one-on-one. That half is outlined. Um, You know, with the exception of the internal pieces here, right, Mm -hmm. that's really all outlined. I could have left that out point over there, but, you know, really, uh, you know, I might want to go ahead and, and, you know, bump that up to there. So here's this big section, I end here. Even if all I do is copy, paste, and flip it over to here, and I have that little tiny jump there, no Mm -hmm. big deal. Or, you know, we know that, look at the sequence view, um, you know, we've got these pieces, right? Here's where we started with this one. Here's, Mm -hmm. you know, the main bulk of it. Here's, you know, that next to last section. Here's that last little piece, okay? So, I'm going to go ahead and select all of these pieces at this point. I'm going to copy them to my clipboard. Oh, I didn't want to cut. Hold on. Copy to the clipboard, right? I'm going to change Mm -hmm. their color for right now. And then I'm going to paste from the clipboard. Okay, see the green? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Edit. Oh, wait. I have to go into my uh, reflect. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to reflect. This always Next messes me up. It's the one in the middle. This that one will one. reflect from the center. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. This, this one should one. reflect here. Yeah. On the outside. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, Hold it on. always does it on the outside. <laughs> okay. Hold on. Undo, undo, undo. Okay. I wonder where that thing went to. 
My undo does not want to work. There it goes. Okay. Let me move this out of my way. All right. So I always forget it's in here. Okay. So reflect. I guess it's going to be this one then. Because we did this one last time and it reflected off the edge. So we want to reflect on this edge. So, okay. So there we go. And we're a little bit off. So we'll just bump it over a little bit. Uh-huh. And, um, you know, and, and you can see where we're off. Let me zoom in a little bit. And you're just going to want to kind of bump it over. I'll probably rotate it a little bit. Maybe, but I'm looking at it maybe because if the image is imperfectly straight and stuff yeah. but but then again if, if you really think about it um it doesn't really matter if the image is straight yeah because your line your sewing is now so that's that's right. the main thing right your sewing would be straight so you, know, you just kind of want to get those aligned and you can ignore the image if you really come down yeah. to it yeah but i'm a right. little bit over so let's just get these points lined up Okay, so, you know, so basically, um, image hide. Okay, so that's pretty much what we've got. We've got yeah. the basis, right? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. So, you know, you don't really, you know, we we just want this to be symmetrical. If the image is a little bit off, um, which actually the image doesn't look like it's off, but in that case, then the pattern's off, right? But anyway, we want it to be symmetrical. So now all you have to worry about are these little, you know, pieces in here. And at that point, I would probably totally ignore the image other than using this half, right? Because this is mirrored. So you're going to ignore the image other than this half. And if that's the case, then when you do these last two sections, you know, you're going to have to look at it that way. Okay, so what we have now is... Um, we want the green to go to the bottom, okay? And we ended here. Remember I said we might have a little jump or we might have something. What I would do is I would probably do these pieces and then begin, you know, sewing again at the closest point, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's one way to look at it. You know, you're going to have a jump one way or another. It just is a matter of where you're going to put that jump. So let me go ahead and I'm going to select. We'll do these in red so we have a little more control over the color section because, you know, these are mirrored. So I'm going to try to mirror these as best I can. Okay, so there's one. In and outs are at the top. We'll worry about moving those in a second. Okay, so on this one, you know, I would leave my in point up there, but take the out point down here. And this one, you know, your in and out points are out there. So now you're going to just copy, paste, you know, go back to reflect. And move it over. Okay, so <laughs> you've got your symmetrical sides, and we have these red pieces. And, you know, where I would put these red pieces would be in between for right now. Because you know that, you know, you stop here, right? Mm -hmm. So your next piece is here, and then it jumps to here, and then to here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so then you can look at where your green pieces are. You know, we jump all the way over to theirs, which we, we really don't want to do. Hold you know, on. you don't want you don't want that big of a jump, right? All right. Oh. So let me go ahead and uh hide the image to see a little bit better. Okay, so we don't want to jump all the way over there. Um we've got this I've got the electrician uh -huh. here, I'll have to go because he wants to cut the power off, so Okay. Just keep all going right, without me ladies and I'll get back if I can quickly enough. <laughs> All right, we'll talk okay. to you later, Meg.
Okay. Okay, bye. Bye-bye. All right, so now we've got, we know that we don't want this piece to be our first piece, right? Right. But this piece is pretty close to this. You know, here's my out point, here's my in point, and I can just drag this in point down to here. Okay, this piece, I'm going to move all the way down to the bottom. Okay, so here's this piece. There's my out point. Here's this piece. Um, you know, it's not, you know, here's my in point there. You know, my out point was here, right? So if I take this piece, you know, here's my in point. My out point's pretty good. That should be okay. You know, this piece picks up here. Okay, now. This piece can go up here, and I can move my in point to here. See how the jump disappears there? Mm -hmm. This piece, I can move my out point, and I can move my in point over to there. So now all I have is that jump down to here. Mm -hmm. And if I really want to make it shorter, I can move my in point up here. All right, does that make sense now? Yeah. You know, and if it doesn't really bother you, honestly, you can just have the jumps. Okay, so now we've got all these pieces and they're done. And, you know, we don't want all these eight bazillion colors. You know, I mean, they can all be one color. We just you wanted to control this a little bit with color so that, you know, we knew where things were. So now I'm going to select all of these <clears throat> and I'm going to make them one color. <clears throat> So I've got a couple of minor jumps, you know, nothing real major that certainly I could clip out of there without a problem, right? Uh, right. Okay, and this is the first round of sewing. This is going to be, you know, our our line. We know that we're going to cut these pieces in here. That's what we're going to cut. Anything that, you know, like in here, I, I would cut here, but I definitely don't want to cut all the way through, uh -huh. right? You, and you know, that you know because, you know, you are going to look at that pattern. And this is a very symmetrical pattern. It looks pretty good. So that's our base. And, you know, even though we have a couple of jumps, it's okay. We've gotten this section done, and it stitches out pretty logically to, you know, give us a nice base and then to use as, you know, like if you're going to do this as a standalone piece, right, if this, um, instead of, you know, like leaving fabric on the side, because you can do cut work several different ways. I could take this as a standalone piece that I want to sew on to something else later. I could put this on the edge of a uh, piece of fabric or tablecloth or, or, you know, something on the edge, and I could cut this part away and leave this part up here attached. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Kind of like a Battenberg lay kind of thing. Um, kind of. It would be, um, let me find a big, I'll make a big square. Okay, pretend this is your fabric, right? Uh -huh. Okay, so I could do a couple of different things with this. Okay, let me move that into position. I'll change the color. Okay, so if I were doing this and I wanted this to be just, you know, like a piece of, uh, you know, standalone, right? Mm -hmm. I would, you know, I would treat it like an applique. I would stitch that tack down and then I'd slap a piece of fabric on here, stitch my placement, right? And then trim off the excess fabric so I had like this little standalone piece and okay. leave the wash way behind it, right? Or if I wanted to put this on the edge of something, I would stitch this on the edge and I would trim my fabric um, probably from here all the way around this section and I would leave this top piece here. Connected. Okay. okay, or I could just dead set this in the middle of a piece of fabric. And... In that case, I would cut out these pieces, but this would be, you know, blanket stitched or, you know, buttonhole stitched or satin stitched into place. Okay. Okay. 
So, you know, cut works like this combination of things. It's going to be, you know, um, the edges here are highlighted by the heavier stitching. That's what gives it definition. You can do this in multiple colors. It doesn't have to be done in one color. Like, I could do these tulips in pink mm -hmm. or red mm -hmm. or yellow or whatever color I wanted. I could do this piece, you know, in something to make it stand out, you know, separate from this, like in gold with green leaves and red tulips. Or Okay, it doesn't always have to be one color. I can do whatever I want with it. Um, the predominant thing is that I'm going to cut out these things here. Okay, and the other thing that you have to think of is when I cut these out, if I didn't have Richelieu support in here, these pieces would curl. You know, anything that's got that curve is going to curl because you've cut it on a bias. This point would curl, right? Mm -hmm. This would start curling and flopping around. And, it, you know, by the time you were done, you would hate this because even pressing it is only going to do so much, right? Mm -hmm. The natural... Um, flow of the fabric is going to make it want to curl because it's on a bias on these curves. So that's why you have the little Richelieu bars in there. I'm going to not unhide the image. These bars. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Those are mostly done with stitching. But if you want, you can, you know, draw the lines here or, you know, put the stitching here to indicate where those Richelieu bars are, and you could cut and you could leave those in there. The problem with doing this by machine is this. If these are too wide, then, you know, you're you're going to have some, like when you cut them, you're going to have fuzzies hanging, right? Mm -hmm. If they're too narrow, they're just going to get torn up, you know, anyway when you do the stitching here. Mm -hmm. So generally with embroidery, we make them ourselves with stitches. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay, so step one, you have decided what you're going to do. And I can tell you, based on this pattern, if we're going to use this pattern, this was inset into something at least on this edge. Maybe this edge was cut away. Mm -hmm. But the pattern is intended to be inset at least this part because of these little pieces here. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, a lot of times like these vintage patterns were used for curtains or, you know, so you would have these insets into, you know, these, um, you know, um, curtains, like lacy, gentle curtains, right? Or they're meant for tablecloths or they're meant for collars for, for shirts, right? You'll find a lot of collar patterns. Okay, but this one, you can tell, really was meant to be at least inset down here, which means it probably was meant to be inset into something, a cushion, a curtain, or, you know, something to that effect, right? Um, you know, but anyway, so that doesn't mean that's what you have to do. Now, here's my first line. Now what I have to do is, you know, I stitch this down, either slap the fabric on it or not, and then I need, um, you know, if I'm going to do a zapplique, I would have to duplicate these lines and stitch them a second time to hold the fabric down, right? Right. Um, if I'm in setting this in fabric, you know, I have to decide, you know, what do I want to do with these? You know, is one time around okay? Or, you know, maybe I might want to do, you know, two times around. Depends on how much I backtrack. I really didn't backtrack too much. So... You know, I would probably say, let's go ahead and make it a two-ply. And maybe not. <laughs> no, it's like, well, <laughs> not really sure I like that. <laughs> we go ahead and change that back. Okay, it's back to a run now. Um, I'm not really sure would why. Would a beam be the same? Would a beam? The beam would be pretty heavy, okay? Oh. Okay, well, I don't know why all those are all showing, but let me turn this off and turn it back on because I know we don't have jumps quite like that. And we were doing okay before I changed that. So, oh, you know what? It probably moved all my in and out points again. Oh. Um, but anyway, so you guys have the gist on, on that, and I'm not going to take the time to move. Once I changed it from run, it moved all my in and out points. That's yeah. why it's so flaky. 
black the black areas that you're cutting out, you're not you're not putting like an organza back behind that. That's just gonna be a complete blank cutout. It's gonna be a blank layer. cutout. Okay. okay. So um you know, it's going to be a complete blank cutout. Now, I'm going to go ahead, just for the sake of my sanity and yours right now, I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, I'm going to delete this half since it moved my in and out points all over the place. <laughs> just for the sake of, of our sanity at this point. Okay, you got to go. Okay, so I saw some, you know, in and out point issues, but they're not nearly as dramatic as they were before, right? right. Yeah, it did. It moved all my in and out points is what it did. Okay, so we had you up here. Okay, the end point was good. The out point needs to go over to here. Okay, so we're slowly but surely regaining our sanity. Okay, here we go. All right, so, um, you know, now, and personally, I wouldn't, I would control this with color. I truly would control this with color, right? And I would have done one half of this and then flipped it all at one time. Okay, just so you know, to save yourself some kind of stress and aggravation, right? Mm -hmm. um, to me, that is a whole lot less stressful than, you know, fighting it out with, trying to figure out why there's that funny jump there. Oh, because you're supposed to go up there probably. I'm just trying to re reorganize our, you know, poorly. Yeah. <laughs> Since everything kind of shifted all over. There we go. That's looking better. So, you know, to be honest, I would have said, okay, here's my red section, right? And kept it red. And just, you know, like, and even half of this, I don't even need half of this, you know. But, you know, that's easy enough to get rid of. That's an easy enough piece. But I would have done one half of it and just flipped it at the end. Okay, and just control your colors. You know, if you know where you begin and where you end, um, you know, it's a little bit easier. Like maybe starting here is not the best thing, but, you know, who cares? You're going to have a couple of jumps, big deal, right? If you won't put a color stop in there, it'll just trim the thread and start anyway. This is nothing more than our guideline. And now for the second layer, if you are doing this as a standalone piece on a backing, right? You're going to treat it like an applique. This is your placement. You're going to make the same thing as your tack down, right? And then you're going to cut these pieces out, right? You don't have to do a hand cut. You're going to have to hand cut each one of these out. And what I use is I take take this, I leave it in the hoop, and I put it on a cutting board an old like kitchen cutting board mm -hmm. and I use an exacto knife. Those a wood one works fantastic. The ones with any grip to it will drive you out of your mind. Okay. You know, like those those cor corning ones that have like the little texture to them. Yeah. I've all so, out of wood, so Yeah, a wood one is great. You don't have to put a lot of pressure cuz you just want to cut the fabric away. If you cut the backing, which you probably will, right? No biggie. Just put some wash away. Even if it's, you know, even if you can't really see through like that violin, it washes mm -hmm. away. Who cares, right? Just put it on top for support. That's all you need. Um, you can put a couple layers of clear on top. One layer of violin is probably good. Before a couple you, layers. Before you stitch this out, you're talking about putting the violin on top of it? Now, after. After you oh, cut after. these pieces away. Okay. Okay. After you cut this, you are probably going to, at the bare minimum, nick your backing underneath. So you still need some support here. So don't don't leave these open with no backing. Put a topper on the top. Or the black. You're cutting this black. Okay. Okay, but you're you're saying you want us to just cut the fabric and not the stabilizer that's behind it. Is that what you're as saying? Best as, as best as you can, but this is what I have oh, found. Okay. okay, but this is what I found so that you guys know. It's easier to just cut it and put topping on, you know, put it like the clear topping or even another layer of violin on top. Okay. Because otherwise what happens is you're trying to just cut the fabric and you end up kind of pulling this a little. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or 
you know, if you want, you can put another layer of violin, a little sticky spray on that and stick it to it. I just don't like sticking things to the back of my hoop. I, I like them. I like to know that they're hooped and secure. Okay. So what I usually do is take two to three layers of clear and put it on top, you know, the washway, the clear washway, or a layer of violin on top. Okay. Okay. Because you don't want to, first off, we have to make these virtually bars. Okay. Second, you really, you know, you we're still going to be putting stitching around here. Okay. So, and when you're cutting, bear that in mind, like, you know, I want to get close here, right? I want to get close to where this line is. But, you know, the whole goal is not to try not to really cut this line. So you're going to leave a little bit of space, right? Uh-huh. Because we're going to be putting a satin stitch around this. Okay? Uh-huh. So, you know, you'll have a little bit of fabric there. And if you happen to nick the, the thing, okay, no big deal. It's not going to be the end of the world. But the goal is to try not to nick the, the uh, you know, right. stitching lines. The truth of the matter is, is that you will. You know, it, it's just inevitable. But that's okay. And, you know, so we've got this. And we're going to put, you know, some support on top. And a good thing to do with this fabric is to starch it before you put it in the hoop. Okay, either with a heavy um, shirt starch or with, you know, the heirloom, like, stiff it. It's called stiff it. Um, actually, heavy-duty starch will do as well. But when you press it, make sure you put a, um, you know, like a Teflon sheet on it so you don't burn the starch onto the fabric. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, you know, so you've got pretty rigid fabric anyway. Okay, now, so you've done this, and we've got these Richelieu lines to contend with. And then we've got a satin stitching to contend with, right? And the satin stitching is going to have to go and do all of the detailing. Like, see this piece here? We have to get those details in, but we also have to have the Richelieu lines in. Okay, when I do Richelieu lines, what I'm going to do is, you know, I need to create these so that they are like lace. That's really what they are, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and change the color just so you can see what's going on. Um, you know, I would create these, and I would probably make this a triple bean, okay? And, you know, you can go ahead and you can start. And if, you, if you're worried about jump stitches, then... You know, truly use use a, a color change if you want. But generally, you know, I'm going to use like a series of travel stitches, right? So I'm going to go ahead and make this run, and I'm going to go over into this red line. Okay? I'm going to go over into that red line because I those are generally secure um, or, you know, should be basically, right? Mm-hmm. So if I if I want to, well, let me backtrack for a second. If I'm, you know, doing this as applicator, maybe even if I'm not, one of the better things to do truly is to, you know, do this second layer. I think Meg might be I'm back. back. Hello. I'm back. <laughs> I'm glad you wasn't gone forever. <laughs> <laughs> We're just talking about, we, we didn't get real far, Meg. Hold on, I'm going to go ahead and edit, copy that to the clipboard, and change the color, and then I'm just going to paste it. Okay, paste from clipboard. Okay, so here's our tomato red, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, okay, here's the green layer. That's going to be now be our first layer. The tomato red layer is that second layer after we've cut away, okay? So we've got this stitching down. It's going to hold any other backing that we've put into place. And now we have to deal with these Richelieu lines and the cover, okay? But the problem is, is that you want to make sure you get those Richelieu lines in. Um, you want them to be secure, right? And, you know, these are going to be your main concern, because trying to do this cover and then do the Richelieu lines and then do the cover is not always the best way to do this. I, I need these in place. Hold on. Mm. I need to not move that out of place. How's that? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to mm -hmm. make my Richelieu lines. I'm going to use the purple instead so I know what they are, you know. And 
you know, I'm going to say I want it to be a bean. Wait a minute, Bernie, before you go any further. Uh huh. Okay. Your your green line is your initial stitch out line. Yeah, correct? maybe this is the best way to do it. We'll leave the red line as our initial stitch out. How's that? Okay. That's okay. your initial stitch out. Then the green after, line after is our second just, one. Okay, but after you stitch the red line, that's uh, when you cut. That's and when you then, cut. And then you put your violin over top of that. Then you uh -huh. do your second layer, your green. Right. Is that that right? green's gonna yep, that okay. green will hold the backing into place. If okay. you clipped any of those lines, it's gonna give it a little bit more support now, right? Okay. Okay, now the third thing we're gonna do are these little Richelieu lines. And we're gonna use purple to do that. Up, oh, sorry, hold on. Okay, let me go to purple. You know, I am just having one of those go bad here, select arrow. Yeah, that's it. I'm thinking. I thought I clicked off of that. Had it, had it, had to be, had to be cut it out once you've got the backing on. Or you put the, I can't remember how we did this. Okay, when first off we do the red line. Okay, that red line's our initial sew. Yeah. We take it off yeah, on the, the fabric. Off, right off the machine. Right. Yeah. And you're gonna put it on a wood, you know, wood cutting board or something. You're not worried about cutting yeah. up. And, and you're gonna take your sew. exact. Right. Leave it in the hoop and cut with an X-Acto knife. All right. Okay. Leave it in the hoop. You haven't got your backing on at this stage, have you? You've got the backing on the bottom. Right. Wash away or tear away right. on the bottom. But the chances of oh, you... Oh, that's right. And then you put it on the top, don't you? Right. The chances of you not cutting your backing, you know, or, <laughs> first off, it would drive you out of your mind. I, I'm telling you because I know. And nil nil to zero. Right, right. By the time by the time you get through two of these, you'll be like, "Go, oh, forget that backing. I don't even care." And yeah. and you know, so truly, it's just easier to cut the backing and put something on top. It just <laughs> truly oh, is. Yeah, that's right. I remember now. Yeah. So so after we do this, okay, here's my second layer. It's now stitch those backing pieces to the top, so I have some security again, right? And now we're going to yeah. worry about these Richelieu lines. And these Richelieu lines are important because they connect these pieces and they keep the shape of your cutwork. So mm -hmm. I picked purple for those, Meg, if I can deselect because yeah. I keep selecting things. Okay, so I picked purple because we're going to control it with color. And, you know, I'm on a bean stitch. I went in and I set it to be a bean. And what I'm going to do is create basically like a little you know, outline. I don't want to put this right on top of it, okay? I'm going to create it like an outline, okay? So I'm building, like, the structure, and I'm going over top of, let me zoom in so you can see, I'm going, you know, across those green lines, not significantly across, just enough that I know enough. that, to catch. you know, these are secure, right? Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to take that same running line, or I can use actually the manual line, which might be better. And I am going to build my own little structure Money. here. Okay. I'm just making, I'm, I'm literally building, you know, really like a bridge. Okay. And these are all done with the manual punch. And the reason that's a little bit easier is I control the stitch length here. So there's not any little extra points, and I can always come back, and I can go like this, and I make sure that I get across those lines, or at least connect it to them, right, to build a little bridge. Do you want to grab, grab yourself a Pepsi Max out of the bottom bridge? Okay, so here's... I don't here's, think I've got any... Yeah, I'm, yeah sorry. Okay, so there's Hold my little... Second. Okay, there's my little bridge, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And that's a pretty secure little bridge. That's going to do do the job. It's going to connect all of these cords together. Um, I could probably space that out a little bit, but, you know, it's okay. Let me zoom out a little. Okay, so there's my bridge. And I'll turn off my points so you can kind of see. There's my little bridge. This is where I end up here. And I'm just going to kind of travel over to the next bridge. So if I have a little extra line in there, no biggie, right? Um you know, I probably should have started down here, then I could have just, you know, traveled around. But it's about the same distance because I don't want to go across the fabric. 
And I'm just going to travel right inside this line. You could go on top of it if you want to, but, you know, right inside is fine. Until I come down to where I need to do the next Richelieu Bridge. So really, you know, I've got that first layer that holds things together. I've got this layer. And, um, <clears throat> oh, you know what I did forget to tell you? Hold on. You don't want to do a triple beam here. What you do want to do on this is you want to go back to, you know, just your normal thing. Okay. Can you change your in and out points on that to go to the other side so that you just have um, a little jump not, off not on the manual punch one, you can't. Oh, okay. Okay, but if I'm using just a run line, I can. But um, here's, you know, like my run line, I can change my in and out points, but I did mm -hmm. the manual punch thing. But I don't want to jump across here. I would not oh, want okay. to jump. Okay, I would have to travel either way. That's why I said it doesn't really matter. You know, I could travel up here and do this one. I could, you know what I mean? Yeah. You're going to have to travel or you're going to have to take the jump, one or the other. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so... But one thing I do, if I'm using this, I want to make sure I'm not on bean when I travel. I just want to go to run. Okay, okay so you're going to bounce back and forth from those. And, you know, you're just going to kind of travel this right inside. Don't don't go too far away. Don't worry about if you're right on top. Big deal. You're going to cover this all up anyway. You know, and, and all this is going to do is give it a little, maybe a little more gusto, you know, on the satin stitch, right? It's just going to build a little bridge for the satin stitch. And... Instead of having it super heavy, what you can do on this is you're just going to decrease your underlay on the satin stitch, right? Mm -hmm. So I've traveled down here. Go back up. Tell it you want it to be I, a bean. I thought last time we used style stitch for that. We did. This is this is the better way to do it. I don't like using the steel okay. stitch over much. This really is the better way to do it. Okay, so there I've built this again, and since, I, you know, I'm going to have to travel over to here, I can make a choice. Do I want to do maybe, you know, a third line down and get down there, or do I want to move my in and out points? You know, you can do it either way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let me kind of zoom in a little bit. Here's my out point. I can just move that out point down to there. Okay. And the same thing, you know, you're going to take this, and, you know, I don't have to do it as heavy as I did it up there. You know, because we're going to put satin stitching over it. What I want to do is build something that's going to kind of hold together here. Oh, wait. I started in the wrong spot. You know what I mean? I just want, like, kind of fabric here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something that's going to be a good enough bridge to be able to cover up with the satin stitching. You know, you can't just slap, or you know, a satin stitching on your wash away. It just doesn't hold it together as well. And, you know, and I'm just going to continue to do this with, you know, all of these, oh, ooh, wrong, wrong one, hold on, with, you know, all of these little Richelieu pieces, I'm just going to travel. You know, that's all I'm going to do and make sure that this is not in the bean stitch, which it probably still is. Yep. And you're just going to bounce back and forth. And if you happen to forget, you know, oh, well, you can see over here it says run, manual. You know, if you really want to check them, you can. Um, if you want to stay just on a regular stitch, you know, you don't necessarily have to use a bean stitch. You could just increase the strength a little bit, you know, with your normal runs, okay? So either or is fine. The goal is to make this, you know, secure enough to put satin stitching on. That's mm -hmm. the goal. Okay. Okay. Because <laughs> these, you don't want to make these so wimpy that when you wash them, they fall apart and you have these strings and then you've defeated the purpose of all the work you did, right? These Richelieu bars are going to be important. Um. You know, unless, of course, you're planning on stitching this with color behind it and not, you know, cutting this out and putting a piece of fabric behind it and putting color behind it and not worried about it being actual cut work, but, you know, more of maybe a decorative technique, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so, you know, then you can ignore the Richelieu bars. But if you're going to do this as cut work in standalone, 
at this size for something this complex, those Richelieu bars are important. Okay, so once we've gotten all that done, you know, we'll probably end up somewhere over in here, you know, depending on the path you take. You know, if you kind of go here, 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 you know, you're going to kind of bounce around. You could probably end up back here, right? Mm -hmm. Wherever you end up, you know, you're going to have to travel because these pieces now are going to be stitched in your cover. Okay, or, you know, in this case, we end up back over here, we'd travel, so we'd start back here and, you know, do the second half, right? But, you know, in this case, we're only working on one half right now. So, you know, say I ended here, I would, you know, just use my little run stitch and travel all the way back to a logical location right here. And each one of these pieces needs to be taken care of, and you're going to do this with a series of, you know, if you want to use the motif, uh, you know, let's go look, like, make some lines and look at what your motifs are capable of doing. And just so I don't have a jump stitch in my way, I'm going to go ahead and change the color. There we go. Okay, so you can go in here and you can see what motifs you have. I, I truly don't remember. They're under programmed. I don't remember if there's a blanket stitch. I don't really think there is a blanket stitch in here. Maybe this one. Okay, that's going to be, you know, like a joining stitch. You don't want that. I don't think there's a blanket stitch in this one. That's going to be like netting. Nope, it does not look like it. Um, I mean, you could go through every one of them and see, but I'm pretty sure there's not a blanket stitch. That, you know, was about the closest you were going to get to it. Um, well, you can see what this one does. That'd be kind of interesting, maybe, but it still wouldn't really give you what you wanted. Um, you can do anything you want on here if you're putting fabric underneath and just kind of attaching it to a fabric because then all you need to do is cover your edges. But if you're doing this as cut work, you want these edges to be clean. Now, I mean, you could use a still stitch now because um, it's a little more even stitch around here. Okay, because trying to do this with your, your satin or your column, if you did this, I'd be impressed. And it would show that you have taken to heart practicing with that that uh, column tool. This, this but real stitch doesn't this, make nice points, though, Bernie. Right, it doesn't make nice points, but you can control those a little bit. I think the last time we did something that was round, maybe that's why we use the still stitch more. But the advantage of the still stitch is this. Everything is uniform. Right? This line yeah. is uniform. And I can still control my in and outs with it. But on something like this, let me go ahead and enter here. Okay, there's, yeah, see, we're going to have problems with the points, too. Yeah. All good, you guys get to yeah. practice. It, it didn't tool. work properly last time. Yeah, I know there's a way to didn't play didn't with the, something. the well, nodes or it, something, but... Is it yeah. there a way that yeah, we moved one of the in, nodes? Um, Oh. Yeah. Uh, you left click and you get where First you click select. Oh, crap. Yeah, I mean, there's, you can control it, but these are like real funky points here. Like, you're talking about when we did like a corner. I don't think it's going to work quite as well on this point up here because these points are coming into like a curve where you're talking about where we did left click, left click, left uh -huh. click and then go back into the, the curve. Mm -hmm. We can try it, but we've got some pretty severe curves here. I think we we go did the vertex the select edit. and we went on it and made it um, a, a, not a curve, the edit? other one. Um, not power edit, but the one where they're... You, vertex, the, the vertex, vertex select. Vertex select, yeah. Yeah, but see, the problem is when, like, this point is so, like, that point, it, it looked okay, you know, mm -hmm. but 
some of these points are so severe that, um, you know, like we could try this one. You could stretch it out a little bit, okay? You know what I mean? You can adjust it. You can get what you want eventually. Uh -huh. You know, I mean, that's going to look pretty good. That's going to cover up things. So we've got that point. You yeah. know, you're just going to have to be very careful. And the left click, left click, left click at the end there helped because this is a left click. Okay. That's a left click. That's a left click. That's a left click. Okay. Same thing here. What I did is left click, left click, left click, right? Mm -hmm. So let me go ahead and I'll get rid of this and I'll show you kind of what we did. Um, personally, it, if I were doing this for like a design, right? Um, I would honestly not use a steel stitch, but I'm comfortable. Let me close this up. I am comfortable with the column tool um, and kind of keeping an even kind of thing, okay? Let me show you. This is what I did on the steel tool. So, you know, and I'll leave this up to you what you want to do, okay? You know, I just basically started down here. and You can control your own and out points with the steel tool. And, you know, I'm going to try to follow this line because I'll balance that, that stitch on this line. When I got to here... I went left click. That is the left click. Left click. Left click. Mm -hmm. And then I came down around here. And I did the same thing. When I got to about here, I went left click, left click, and left click. And why that helps is it stops the curve. Okay, the Bezier mm -hmm. curve. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's why it helps. Now, when I get to something like this, okay, here, I'm going to... Um, go ahead and just go around this curve. But what's going to happen, and I'm going to show you the difference between doing it this way. Okay, now see, I've got those points controlled because I left click, left click, left click, right? Mm -hmm. So I've got mm -hmm. the points controlled, but I don't have something graceful here, right? I could come out here and I can just move this and pick right up here, but I don't have something. This is not a graceful point to me, right? No. And there's. No way to make it graceful, okay? It's just a steel stitch is a line, and the advantage of it is that this is all very even, okay? Hmm. But it doesn't always give it the best character, all right? If I'm using hmm. the column tool, you know, I have a lot more control, number one. I can balance these, right? You know, that's pretty easy. It's easy enough to balance the stitch out, right? You just have to watch what you're doing. And if you right-click, I'm right-clicking so I can navigate these curves. You know, you're just kind of looking, and it doesn't have to be perfect, right? But, you know, and, yeah, it's a little more work than just clicking that line. But I have a whole lot more control. I'm going to kind of quickly move up here and I can still edit like if I don't get something exactly right like that point back there I would probably backtrack and fix because I'm a little wide here right but you know when I get to something like this I have a little more control because I can you know bring these points up to here like this and then I can left click and left click to get my point and come back down and begin curving right away you know, and I, I just have a little bit more control. Um, to give you an idea of the difference of how this looks, let me turn off these beads. Okay, I might, you know, that point I would I would adjust this. You know, I didn't do this perfectly coming in, but you get the point, right? I can control my width. It's a little more work. But the advantage is when I come down into a point like this, right, I'm just going to kind of pick up from here. I can do, you know, when I when I have something like this here, first off, I can control my in and out points. What I would do is I would come down to maybe right here, okay? So pretend we've just continued along here. You know, I would come down to right in here, and, you know, I can control a whole lot of things here. I can narrow this down, right? I can do a run over to here and back and then pick this up, depending on how I want this scroll to look. Like, um, okay, pretend I ended here, 
you know, bing, 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 run, stitch up to here. I don't have to run. I could actually control my in and out points. But um, then I could do something like this, you know, click, click real close. And I can begin to taper this point out. And I have, I can do that with, you know, the column stitch. Mm -hmm. I can't do mm -hmm. that with the steel stitch. And I'm just going to kind of click through this. You know, and the advantage, like I'm coming into another corner, right? Personally, um, you know, I would kind of come up a little bit closer maybe to here. And then you've got the left click for that inside point, the left click for that outside point, and then you are immediately back here to curve. Okay, that's right an inside. Click after you do the two left clicks, then you go back right and you, right. And you go into a curve. Okay, right now I'm right clicking, right? I'm right clicking into this curve, but I'm coming to a point. So I can right click here because I'm still really curved, and I can left click inside, left click outside, and begin to immediately begin to move into that curve again. Hold on. Let me left click in here to finish that point. And then I'm right clicking again. You know, I, I've got that instant curve. I can control what that looks like. And you can have trouble points on using that. Yeah, the that trick control. to that is if you think about it, right? Like I'm coming in here, here's here's you know, pretend I want to miter a corner. Left click, left click. But I can immediately right click. So I'm getting the curves, right? I'm right-clicking. I left-clicked up there, but I right-clicked here. This is the advantage. I'm controlling that mm -hmm. point, okay? And I, I can control where everything goes. Like, you know, on this point right up here, um, let me turn on my beads. This one here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, here we go. I'm trying to... Zoom in. I could even, you know, kind of control my directions. I can add more things in here if I want, but I don't really need to. This one is good. Don't let this fool you. I'm trying to think of how to describe this. This point will be fine. When it stitches and you have actual thread in here, this is going to be pretty closed up. Okay? So, you know, that's the difference between those two tools. If you're, you know, if you're really nervous, like, if you really look at this, I'm a little more narrow here than I am down in here. You know, I'm a little fatter here. You know, big deal. Those are easy enough to fix. But honest to God, you're really not going to notice those. And worst case, when you're punching, right, it's a good tool to practice. Like, when you're punching, um, I'm just going to kind of pick up here. When you're punching... Zoom in. Don't, you know, do a section at a time. Zoom in, okay? Oh, I have to zoom in. And I can't see them. <laughs> right. Or if you want a guideline, you know, if you want a guideline on how thick that you want to make this line, right, go ahead and uh, use your steel stitch. You'll get a pretty good guide, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, mm. you know that, you know, you can use the steel <laughs> stitch at least. And then, you know what, just use it to trace, right? Mm. Good, idea. Good idea. You know, because then, oh. you know, oh. basically... I'm for thinking down there for dancing. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know what I mean? So, you know, but the trick really is, instead of my having to put left click, left click, left click, left click, and remember where I did it, and if I did it, you know, the trick is here, even if I start, you know, where I'm going to end up on the outside, it's a left click at a point, a left click on the inside of that point, and then I am immediately back to right clicking. Mm. And, you know, it does a, a really great job. Let me get through down to there, okay? Cool. All right. So, you know, use your steel stitch as a guide if you need to, but this is the best tool you can ever learn to use is this column mm -hmm. stitch. Yeah, I like the column stitch. Mm hmm. I like it. I just I haven't mastered it yet. Let's put it that way. I always do. One of the things that, that I do is inside, outside, inside, outside. You know, because really what you're doing is you're making a tight zigzag. So if you're going inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside, right? 
Mm-hmm. One of the nice things about this program is um, if I if I forget, like I should be going over here and I put one here instead and mm-hmm. I go like this, it automatically corrects it for me. See, if I, I should be right. going over no. here, right? Mm-hmm. So, but, you know, so if I cross over, it corrects it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Some <laughs> programs program hasn't been correcting it lately. <laughs> oh, some some programs I'm getting some not. very weird results. <laughs> yeah, some programs do not correct it, and uh, this mm. one will correct it for you. Yeah, I think I have a bug in my my program. <laughs> I'm wondering because you you just have some odd little things that happen, but oh, you know, I, I mean, I do. <laughs> You know, you can do, you know, you can do a lot of different things. You know, there's a lot of ways to do it. I, I can't stress enough getting comfortable with, um, you know, the uh, column tool. I just can't because it just gives you such fantastic results with things, right? Yeah, I'll go along with that. And once, uh, once you taught me how to use it properly, I haven't looked back. Mhm. And it behaves just the same as your lines. You know, if you if you left click, you get straight segments, right? If you right click, you get mm. round segments, right? Mhm. The difference is on the column tools, if I'm left clicking on the inside and left click on the outside, I get straight segments, right? Uh-huh. Mhm. If I, you know, left click on the inside and right click on the outside, I'm going to get a curve on the outside. Might not really show here because I went straight, but you know, I can. Uh, let me think of a better way to do that. Okay, left click, right click, left click, right click, left click, right click. The left clicks on the inside. See, I get a curve, right? Uh huh. Mm-hmm. If I want to miter a corner, you know, really, it's it's very easy because you know I know that I can go like this and lighter the corner. Hmm. If I'm doing a curve... That's, that's where I have my trouble with the corners. I, yeah, I, I, I always look at it. you got to look at it like in angles. Like, you know, this is not really a corner, so I would just round this. This is right. a corner. But, you know, when I come down to this corner, that's why I usually like to do inside, outside, inside, outside, inside, outside. Because then when I get here, I know left click left click right and then i can go into the curve but it's a good thing to practice like use your grid and practice right like um you know for example if i want to do um a curve on the inside i would right click if i want to do a point on the outside i left click right and see what happens uh-huh so, you know, it's a good thing to practice using the grid, making miter corners, right? Okay. I'll have to and, do that. Yeah. I mean, it's always a good thing. I used to have images. I'll see if I can find the images that I used to give to practice, which had, um, oh, they had, uh, um, like, numbers. They were numbered. And I might have them somewhere. I'll look on some of my old um, CDs and stuff and see if I can find them. But, you know, that's always a good thing to, you know, to learn is how to control that still stitch. Because, you know, A, as I'm coming along and I'm doing this outline, the one thing I have to remember is, you know, see these Richelieu bars? Mm -hmm. I still need to put an outline around them. I've built the fabric, right? But, you know, say I did this piece and I'm clipping along here, you know, and I come down to here and I hit this Richelieu bar. Well, okay, you know, I would, let's pretend we were, you know, this was the piece we were still working on. I would kind of come to about here, and I would end, right? Mm -hmm. Then I would have to deal with the Richelieu bar. So let's look at our in and out points. And I'd move my out point down here, okay? So let me zoom in, too, so you can kind of see what I'm doing. Okay, so there's my Richelieu bar, right? And, you know, I still have to deal with that. Um, you know, so I would probably just go ahead and, you know, this one's a little heavier, but, you know, put a little run line down here, right? And here you go. Richelieu bars are a piece of cake. I'm going to, 
you know, left click, left click. And these are very straight. So I'm just going to left click, left click, and I've got the bar done, right? Uh -huh. And you can just slide this point over if you want. And from here, I need to pick up so that I'm even, right? I mean, I might have need to back this one off a little bit. We'll go like that. Okay. So now I end here. So now I need to pick up so that I'm even. Go out of 3D when you're doing this. See the edges are a little more defined here? See these edges? Mm -hmm. Go out of 3D. Like if I'm in 3D, I've got all kinds of stuff going on here. But when I'm out of 3D and I need to line these pieces up, and I'm using a column stitch, it's a piece of cake. If you have to zoom in, hold on, let me zoom in around this this way. Okay, so if you have to zoom in, see by lines how clear I can see the areas? Because then I know that even if I have this little jump right here, big deal, I'm gonna overlap this a little bit, and I'm gonna pick right back up. And all I have to do is, uh, except I'm using the wrong tool. There you go. I'm going to pick right back up here. I'm going to line up these points right on the line and, you know, continue around wherever I'm supposed to go and cover up the edge of that Richelieu line. And when you look at it in 3D, you can see it looks even. See how much easier that is if you're not in 3D? Hmm. I can line that up perfectly. When I'm in 3D, it's a little bit harder. You know, I might be able to line this edge up pretty good. But, you know, I've got, like, compensation going on. So it might be a little bit harder to line that up perfectly. And, and I can tell you now, even though it looks like it's lined up really good, see, it looks like it's pretty good, right? It's not. I'm way over. See the difference? Mm hmm it's just so much easier out of 3D to line those up. It sometimes is easier out of 3D just to use a column tool, period. Let me ask you a question. Uh huh. I have problems on the other thing doing it. To get the in and out points to move, what do you do? Oh, you make sure you have your beads turned on. See the show beads? Uh huh. And, okay, see this red point? That's my out. Okay. The green one is my in. So if I wanted my in point over here, I would just drag them. Like sometimes you have to kind of move that out of the way to get to the out point. Then you just hold left left click and hold your mouse button down. Oh, and left, just, that's what it is. I didn't do that. Yeah, you just put your mouse over it when you get that arrow. Hold the mouse button down and you can drag this along the, the outline. You got to left click on it. Yep, left click on it and drag. Oh, that's what I didn't do. Mm -hmm. I know what I didn't do. I just drag without left click. Yeah, you got to left click and, and kind of grab it. But you've got to wait till you get that arrow. See that that little single arrow? Because right now I have a hand. Once so I get that. To get that. Yeah. Once I get the arrow, I'm good. I can left click on it and just move it anywhere I want. Gotcha. So. But, you know, a lot of times I get... Bernie, I found those manual punch t tools for you. Which manual the drawings, punch tools? The, the manual, the, 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 the practice ones with the numbers on it. Oh, do you have those? Okay, okay. Yeah, I do. Um, I'll, I'll email them to you as soon as we're finished. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, that's okay. Finished. Okay, I knew I, I knew I had them I, for you guys, but I kept thinking, I don't know if they're on here, but I'll... Um, I'll yeah, I, I upload them, them on. on the, I don't know uh, where to find mine. <laughs> yeah, I'll upload them on the uh, the download page for this. I'll put practice images, download practice images. Okay. Yeah, and, I'll send them to you as soon as we're finished. Yeah, they might be a little bit off, like on some of the curves, circle curves, and stuff like that for like the running stitch. But it gives you an idea of what to do. Okay. Um, I think the mm -hmm. squares were left clicks, and the circles on them were right clicks. So when you see the numbers like in a circle, it's a right click. Okay. You see it in, in a, a square, it's a left click. Okay. Yes. And, yeah. Um, yep, that's right. Geez, you've got a good memory, woman. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I, I I use those images for I probably just about every software package I've taught through the years, something similar to that, because it's just such a good way to, to get people used to right and left clicking. 
in that. But Do you know how long ago it was? Oh, we did that. It had to be three, four years ago. April 2009. <laughs> <laughs> That's been a while. I, I missed all that. <laughs> yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> that is so funny. <laughs> All right, so do you guys you guys kind of have the gist on this cut work, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, now, this is a complicated image to use. Mm-hmm. It truly is, right? <laughs> but you do have um, some of these other images, right? You have like this one, I believe, in some of your old downloads. Um, you definitely have this one, right? This one? Remember this one? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes, yes, I did that one. Turned yeah. out beautiful. You can do, you know, little um, you know, practice cut works on these if you want. They're all individualized, right? To get just kind of your chops on on um you know, uh you know, your column tool, right? Mm-hmm. That was the one we did that um fan yeah, the that, reverse that, applique. Um, soft. Yeah, yeah, that mm-hmm. one, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I've got um I've got a couple other ones that I'll upload, but I think you have some of these. Let me look and see what else is in here. I think you guys have some of these. Um, we did a doily. The top, I did the whole top row. I've got anyway. the one on yeah. the left, the fourth one on the. I got. Mhm. Yeah, some of these. A lot of these are like little simple cut work ones, right? Let me mm-hmm. see what else we've got. Uh, this one is, this one you'll have to think about because all those black sections are cut out, okay? Yeah, I haven't got and those. That one I've got. Yeah, and this one, you know, this is a lot easier, but it's a good practice if you want to do, you know, the outlines before you tackle, you know, the more complicated one, right? Okay. But even if you just get half of this done... Worst case, you have to move the colors around and you have a couple of jumps, right? Mm -hmm. Uh So work on half of it or just work on that first, um, you know, if you you really don't want to get super stressed out, right? Just work on this piece in the middle, you know? That's a good piece to start practicing on before you start getting into these more complicated sections, right? Okay. But honestly, I would just do this in mm-hmm. half. Try to keep your ending points over here. Worst case, you have a jump. No big deal. Nobody knows but you. And, um, you know, flip it and just move your colors around, right? And do this piece last to cover it maybe. And do it in a different color if you if it's easier. You know, the, the goal is to get the design the way you want it if you're you know if you're not selling this to anybody who cares if you've got jumps in it it's not a big deal right Mm -hmm. and who cares if this section goes in last and it's a different color if you want to stitch it in the same color just load your thread (laughs) so you know just do it in sections don't you know don't lose your mind trying to do the whole thing. Do it in little sections. If you just get one of the tulips and a couple of these leaves done, so be it, right? Um, but, you know, practice this and practice using this column tool. And like I said, if you want to use the steel tool as a guide, you know, okay. I like that you know, idea. You know, so so you get up to this point, you forgot to left click, left click, left click. Who cares? You're using it as a guide, right? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. And don't forget to resize this image because, you know, that's awfully small, right? Uh Right. (laughs) But, um, you know, so, you know, just, you know, practice. And, and, you know, there's no crime in using this steel stitch as a guide. Would you you like Mm, a couple of baseball happy campy guys down there? They're yelling. I don't know if you could hear them. (laughs) (laughs) So... All right, ladies. That was 2011, not 2009. I read the date wrong. <laughs> That's April funny. 2011. That's pretty funny, you know? Yeah. That's still t- over two years ago. Yeah. yeah. I, I know. I, I've used those images for a bunch of a bunch of different classes. Like when I used to teach nothing but software, 
those were pretty much the images I used or something similar. But if you want to email them to me, I'll upload them, um, you know, with with the yeah, video for this. I'll do that but, now. 